Let's take a look at the uniform distribution. The um, uniform distribution, a continuous probability distribution with values over an interval with all values equally likely, or probability is the same. For our programming functions, given the interval uh, s comma l, s is uh, for the smaller part of the interval, l is for the larger part of the interval. Um, notice the use of the brackets here includes those values. Then if we want a probability at a single value, we use d unip, and then x comma s comma l. And if we want cumulative probability up to that value, we use p unip, and then uh, x comma s comma l. Our steps uh, identify the interval that you're studying, s comma l, it's usually given. Uh, s is a smaller part of the interval, l is a larger part of the interval. If necessary, rewrite with uh, inequality uh, slash equality symbols. And then use the table in the following slide to determine how to enter the function. <clears throat> if we got uh, x equals a, we use d unif um, a comma s comma l. p is uh, the probability of uh, x is less than or equal to a, we use p unif and then a comma s comma l. x is greater than or equal to a. We got 1 minus p unif, um, a comma s comma l. And if it's between two values, inclusive, uh, then we use p unif, b comma, um, uh, that's not right, uh, that should be s comma l. This is version 1 you're seeing here. <laughs> okay, that should be s comma l. There we go. Now it's correct. Okay, so let's look at an uh, example. Given a uniform distribution between 2 and 7. Okay, so a uniform distribution between 2 and 7. Now, um, the probability, this is our probability up here, and these will be our x values. Um, this right here. The width between that is 7 minus 2 or 5. So, and I'm going to deliberately uh, distort this. That should be a rectangle. Um, over here, this will be 1 over 5. So, the that's a pretend that's a horizontal line going across. Uh, the probability at any, any point is 1 fifth. Um, now, how do I get that? Well, uh, this shape is a rectangle. And remember, the uh, area of a rectangle is length times width. Now, area is all of this inside, which we know, since we equate this to a probability distribution, is equal to 1. Because all probability adds up to 100% or 1. Now, this, this um, distance here, let's say, let's say it's length, is 5. Then this height right here, how we get that is we solve for w, so we divide both sides by 5, and we get w is equal to 1 fifth. Now it's really easy. Whatever this distance is here, you just put 1 over that for this uh, up here. Now we're going to use that to check our answers, but we don't really need that for r, which we're going to see. Okay, so we got probably exactly 3. Okay, and just generally, we identify the interval you're studying, and we're looking at, and this, this won't change, it's this right here, so the interval we're looking at is 2 to 7. So the 2 is going to be our S, and the 7 will be our L for all these um, examples. Okay. Step two, if necessary, we write the inequality or equality symbols. Exactly means x equals. Now, that's, uh, and then step three, use the table and following slide to determine how to enter into function. Uh, x equals to a value is this form right here. A will be whatever follows or equals. 
So this is A. So that tells us how we're going to plug it in is D, U, and F. D, U, uniform. Okay, so D, uniform. And then um, 3, comma. And uh, that was our A, and then S and L. Um, we said S was 2 and then 7, so I got 2, comma, 7. And if I run that, that gives us 0 0.2. That probably looks familiar, doesn't it? Remember what I said this was, 1 fifth, uh, which is 0 0.2. And it's the same all the way across here. So the probability is the same no matter what value we choose. The only time it would not be equal to that is if I chose something outside of that range. If I chose like 1 or 8. Uh, but other than that, it'll always be 1 fifth. Okay, let me let me actually write this down. Okay, so this is probability of exactly 3. And that was x equals 3. So a is equal to 3. And then I plugged it in. Well, I guess that was part a, wasn't it? There we go. Part b. Um, less than 4. <clears throat> And we write out what that um, would represent. Now, this is not the same as the binomial and um, our Poisson. These are not discrete values. So if I were to write all the values of means, I'd have to include 3, 3.1, 3.11, 3.111, you know, so I'd be, uh, for the rest of my life, writing it down. I'd never get there. So we'll jump directly to the inequality. So this says the probability of the x less than through four. Now, I know it seems weird, but we actually uh, put that as less than or equal to. And uh, I guess I don't need the pound sign there. Less than or equal to. That's our second form right here. A is whatever follows our less than or equal to. So a is equal to 4. And that tells us we're going to plug it into this right here. P unif. And try it again. There we go. And A, S, L. A is 4. S is 2. L is 7. And I get 0.4 as my answer. Now let's look at that graphically. Probability x is less than uh, less than four, less than or equal to. Doesn't matter. Okay. So this is two. This is seven. Clear over here is one fifth, as we've already indicated. Um, it's less than or equal to 4, or less than 4, whichever you choose. Doesn't matter where I put this. That's not exactly where 4 would be. But less than would be this way. And if I shade that, this represents a rectangle. So this distance here times this distance will give us our probability, or area. This distance here is 2 units, 4 minus 2. So I got 2 times, and then this uh, height right here is 1 fifth. So that gives us... Two fifths, which corresponds to 0 0.4. Uh, so this ge the geometric representation that goes along with this. Now you're wondering, I I said less than four, and I went ahead and put less than or equal to, and you're wondering why. Think of a line, like you're at four. How much? Uh, how wide is that line? I just made it wide, but <laughs> um, well, if it has a width to it, it's no longer a line. It's a rectangle. A uh, line, by definition, doesn't have any width. Uh, because if it had width, then it changes. It's not a line. 
Um, so if it doesn't have any width, it actually doesn't occupy any area. Uh, now, it's kind of weird on this one. And I never really have read much about exactly three. Why doesn't that come up with zero? Um, but um, it comes up with this. Um, but that's the concept behind it. So whether it's less than or less than or equal to four, you still just go with the same principle. The less than or equal to. Okay. And I got two A's there. Okay, this is the second A, also known as B. Okay, C. <clears throat> we got the probability of, um, what do we got? At most six. At most six. And I'll rewrite that with the inequality. At most six means um, less than or equal to. So I'll do probability x is less than or equal to 6. So a is going to equal to 6. That's what follows my a less than or equal to. And I do p unif 6, comma, 2, comma, 7. And um, where I'm getting that from, just back to our table, the less than or equal to, this is how you're going to plug it in. And if I run that, we get 0.8. Well, let's draw it gra graphically. Um, less than or equal to 6. Okay, so we got 2, 7 here. Let's say 6 is here. It doesn't matter where you put it, actually. Less than or equal to would be shaded this way. This distance over here is 1 -fifth again. Okay, the distance between 2 and 6, since that's my shaded region. 6 minus 2 is 4 times my height, which is one-fifth, gives me four-fifths, which is equal to the 0.8. Okay, D. Um, more than three. More than three. Well, more than, if I think what that represents, that's a probability that x is greater than or equal to 3. Again, more than means greater than, but we always just use uh, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, so we never consider that other case for the reason I told you about the width of a line. That would match our third form. So a is what follows your greater than or equal to. So in this one... A is equal to 3. That tells us that we want to plug it into this form. 1 minus P unif. 1 minus P unif. And then our A, which was 3. And then small part of interval, large part of interval. That 2 and 7 doesn't change any of these problems. Run that. Gives us that. Um... Okay, let's draw a picture. Just curious, it comes up with the same answer as the previous one. Always makes me wonder if I did do it right. I'm not working off a script on these. If I did a script, it wouldn't be any fun to create these videos. And I made up these numbers before I um, ran or did this. So greater than or equal to three. Ah, sure enough, greater than or equal to would be this way, and so the width of that. 7 minus 3 is 4 times my height, which is still 1 fifth. And it is the same as the previous previous one. <clears throat> okay. Let's take a look at E. Uh, e. E says at least 2. At least two. And this is a greater than or equal to case. So that's going to be x is greater than or equal to two. And greater than or equal to is third form. So it says we uh, a is what follows our greater than or equal to. 
So A is equal to 2. And our formula says 1 minus uh, P and F, um, 2 comma 2 comma 7. Ah, we didn't plan that one very well. That should be 100%, which is fine. Um, yep, gives us 1. If I were to draw that, I didn't mean to make up one as 100%. <laughs> But, not that it matters. It's good to show a variety. 2, 7, greater than 2. Here's 2, so this would be the entire thing. Still works out. This width of the shaded area, 7 minus 2 is 5, times my height, 1 fifth, which gives me 1. Okay. And last one. Okay, F. Probability between 3 and 5. Between 3 and 5. Equals, and this would be from 3, less than or equal to X, less than or equal to 5. Between those values. That's our last form here. And A is what's in front, uh, front of the lesser than or equal to, and B is what it's the end. Or A is a smaller number, B is a larger number. So A is equal to 3, and B is equal to 5. And this tells us to plug it into this form. So P unif B. B, which is 5, 2, 7, minus P unif, I think it's A, yeah, ASL. A, which is 3, 2, 7. Run that. We get 0 0.4. Let's go check that. Um, between 3 and 5. Again, don't worry overly about making this perfect. We're just trying to visually see it. Between 3 and 5 is the shaded area here. This distance here, 5 minus 3 is 2, times the height, which is still 1 fifth, gives us 2 fifths. And that accounts for our answer of 0.4. And that's how you, you do the uniform distribution in the R programming language.